film about traditional orchards. And today we're looking at the subject of pollinators and orchard wildlife. There are a few places as beautiful in spring as an orchard in blossom. But for all this blossom to become a fruitful crop, we need it to be successfully pollinated. Now the honeybee and the subject of its decline has had a lot of attention. But actually in an orchard like this, much of the pollination isn't done by honeybees. Today we're joined by Gary Farmer from the Vale Landscape Heritage Trust. Gary's an entomologist. So if it's not the honeybee then Gary, what is it that's doing all this pollinating for us? There's a surprising number of species that pollinate air fruit, from tiny little fungus gnats through to beetles to wasps and earwigs and all sorts of things in between. And orchards themselves are so important for wildlife and yet they're declining horrendously. Keeping our, our traditional orchards alive means we're keeping our wildlife alive and our pollinators. This beautiful apple tree here is in uh, full blossom. The sun's come out, temperatures are warming up and so you can probably even hear the buzzing that's around me at the moment. There's bees and all sorts of things but most of these bees are solitary bees. They're not the honeybees. These nest in holes in the ground very often in colonies but they have their own nests. There are bumblebees and we even saw just over there just a red admiral butterfly coming in to take some nectar and doing the pollination while it does it. Other things like wasps, earwigs, that we tend to think are baddies in the garden are actually beneficial in the orchard. Not only do they pollinate but they also take small insects and caterpillars and various other things that would be doing damage to the buds. There are things like daggerflies which are actually predators but they get in amongst the flowers. They continue to pollinate, as do dung flies, yellow dung flies. And even ladybirds, predators that are on the trees, eating aphids and things, they get in amongst the flowers and help to spread that pollen. When the beetles and the, the flies land on the, on the flowers, they're coated in pollen. And then when they've had a feed from that flower, they'll move on to another one, and that pollen is then collected by the next flower, and so pollinates the fruit. Things like honeybees will work a single tree very hard and so there's very little cross-pollination whereas things like hoverflies are always on the move so they'll dash from tree to tree and they'll spread that pollen around from one tree to another and so cross-pollination is probably far greater from a hoverfly than it is from a honeybee and even the beetles and the fungus gnats that you get in the pollen will just hop from one tree to another when the conditions are right and pollinate air apples and air pears and pollen beetles and they'll even be out in cold weather, so for plums for instance, pollen beetles are really important pollinators and yet we just don't see them at work. Longhorn beetles, they come and they feed from the nectar and the pollen and they pollinate air trees and then they're gone. That's because they spend most of their lives actually in dead wood and so many of air pollinators live in dead wood as they, when they're young. Many of the beetles and flies depend on dead wood. This is a lovely example of what's going on inside old trees as they start to decay. You can see in here the galleries from the beetles that have been feeding through it for years and years. And as it starts to rot down and gets a bit damp and certain hoverfly species will lay their eggs and their larvae will live inside the, the mush and other beetle species will live down in there as well. And also things like fungus start to get in and then the fungus gnats follow. So all of these insects that are feeding inside this decaying tree will then go on to pollinate the fruit in the rest of the orchard. Here we have a jumping spider and this is a little predator that benefits from these dead trees. When the flies come in they ambush, race around, defying gravity and they can jump on their prey. This is actually the frass of the noble chafer and by putting a teaspoon on the end of a little stick we can delve deeper and deeper into the rot holes and pull out the chewed up remains of the wood and if you look carefully what looks like cheap coffee has got these very very hard cylindrical droppings which are actually the poo of the noble chafer youngsters. Worcestershire is, is the hub for, for the species, the sort of centre of its universe in, in Britain because we've got still quite a few nice old orchards with good rot holes and things the noble chafer benefits as do many other insects. The fact that this tree itself is actually still alive is quite remarkable. As well as all the pollinators these traditional orchards are valuable to a vast range of wildlife from reptiles to birds, amphibians, it's amazing what does live in a traditional orchard. There's been a lot of talk recently about insect Armageddon, about the number of species and the volume of species that are disappearing. But insects 
basically support life on, the, on this planet. They do pollinate, they pollinate not just the food that we take, but food that all other animals take. And they are themselves food for other animals, such as birds. We're standing here in this beautiful old orchards and there's red starts singing and black caps. They wouldn't be here without the insects. So think about planting a tree in your garden, a fruit tree, they're brilliant. You benefit from it, wildlife benefits from it. Leave some dead wood, piles of dead wood. They don't have to be spread all over the garden. You can have neat piles dotted around. Leave a few nettles and look after our wildlife. These traditional orchards are wonderful places, but they do face a dilemma. They were planted for a purpose of producing fruit, which largely they don't commercially do today. So they're more like nature reserves and they do rely on the goodwill of owners, volunteers and those with a passion for these wonderful old places.